Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on analyzing and interpreting data level four statistical analysis. You can see in the book that we have a online data set. So we'll get to that in just a second. You're gonna be looking at relationships. And so when you're looking at data, the key thing you wanna do is both analyze and interpret the data. But in the future, we're gonna have data that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, massive data sets that we'll have to make sense of, and so we're gonna practice a little bit of that. First thing you wanna do is you wanna figure out what is the data that I'm really looking at, and then you wanna use some of the online tools to start organizing that data so we can make sense of big data sets. After you've done that, we look at the data and we analyze the data. We try to figure out what does this data actually mean, and we do that just using these two things, looking for patterns and then looking for relationships within the data set. And then the last thing we do is we interpret. We try to figure out what does all this data mean and what predictions can we make. So after watching this video, you should be able to use some of the online data sets related to mammals and size and lifespan. Also, you could look at snowshoe hair population. I've got some good data on that. I'm gonna start by just showing you a sample data set that has some information on books, and then you'll have a chance to do the same thing with sport balls. And so what I'm gonna do is clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna figure out what are we using? This is something called CodeApp, and it's just a free online way to look at data sets, and I've loaded a data set in it. And so the first thing we wanna do is figure out exactly what is this about? You could read some of the titles here, but graphs are a really good way to figure out what things are actually about. And so I'm gonna put a data graph to the right side, and each of these dots represents one book. It's got information on the pages, the weight, the price of the book, and the genre of the book. And so the first thing I'm going to do is write down what is the data that we're actually dealing with. Okay, the data that we're dealing with is books, and it's book size, price, and genre. Next thing we want to do is start to organize the data. We're going to try to figure out, like, how do we make sense of the data? And so to do that, what I can do is if, if I highlight things on the left side, it shows, shows me what the book is. But a really easy way to organize it is if I just click on the bottom. So if I click down here, I could look at the title, and it would organize all the titles. I could also click down on the bottom, and I could say, mm, I'm interested maybe in in uh, the prices of the book, how expensive they are, and then it shows me what a range is. And so as I play around with that, I start to all of a sudden figure out, okay, what are some patterns in the data that I find interesting? And so let me write down just a quick pattern that I notice as I look at this. So I'm looking at the price, and so the first pattern I might say is that, um, I guess we have, let's look at the genres of books. How many genres do we have? So there we have just four genres of books. It looks like uh, we got biography, romance, sci-fi, and thriller. And so maybe I could look at, uh, let's just look at price again. And so a pattern I could write down is that we have uh, four genres. So a pattern I notice is that we've got four genres of books and the prices range from $10 to $50. Um, what's another pattern that I could look at to show you some of the statistical tools? Okay, so it shows me the pages. It looks like they go from 200 to around 800. If I click on the right side, then I could look at the mean and the median, and I could calculate and show those values up here so I can see those values up at the top. And so that's other patterns that I could notice, statistical patterns. Let me write that down. So the pages range from 200 to 800. I also have a mean and a median. Uh, a box plot might be interesting, so I could look at like that lower quartile, and then we could look at the upper, like 25% of the books, and so we have some really, really big books it looks like up here to the right side. So that's me looking at patterns. The next thing I wanna start doing is I wanna start looking at relationships. And so I've got these different columns, and so let me show you some relationships and, and how we might be able to figure that out. So maybe I'm interested in pages and how pages is related to the weight of the book. So it's gonna put pages here on the x-axis and then on the y-axis we're gonna have the weight. Um, really cool statistical analysis I could do is I could do a least square line and so that's gonna show me when I click on that, what is a best fit line? 
And another really cool thing here is it shows you the correlation value, this R squared value. The closer this value is to one, the more uh, likely we are to have a direct relationship between the two. And so that's a pretty cool relationship. Let me write that down. Okay, so I said as the pages increase, the weight increases, and we have a correlation value. It's approaching one, so it's, it's a pretty good relationship. Let me find some other relationships. So I also found that as the pages increase, the price increases, but that R squared value is way less. And so there is a relationship, but it's not as strong a relationship. Let me find another relationship. So here I'm looking at the median how, uh, price of the books and it's more expensive if it's a thriller than if it's a sci-fi book. So now I've looked at a bunch of patterns, I've got some relationships, but I really want to figure out is how are all the parts listed in this related to each other? So I would play around with relationships and then I'm going to start to put those out so we can organize those in a more direct way. Okay, so as I've looked around, I started to see a lot of relationships, but there's really only one of those that I can, just in my brain, make sense as a causative relationship. So I think if you increase the pages in a book, the weight of the book will increase. Now, if you change the genre, it's not going to somehow cause the pages to increase, but there may be a correlation there. But the only causation I see is pages to weight with all these other cool relationships. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to interpret the data. I want to make sense of the data. So the interpretation that I wrote down is that if you increase the pages, then you cause an increase in the weight, but there are many other correlations between price pages, genre, and weight. And then the last thing I could do is I could make some kind of a prediction. So the prediction that I said is a 500 page book, and I'm just using this kind of best fit line, a 500 page book is going to cost about $33 and it's going to weigh about 0.9 kilograms. And so uh, this is just a way to use CodeApp as a way to organize the data, analyze and interpret it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this all up and then I'm going to give you a chance to do this on your own. Okay, now that you've learned how to do some analysis and interpretation on big data sets like this, I've made one for you to use. I'll put a link down below and so you can find that. And what I would encourage you to do is go through, figure out what is this data, play around with organizing it. It's pretty straightforward. You always want to make sure that you hit the graph and that goes off to the side and you can resize it. And then pretty much all the tools you're going to want to use are, are up here or on the different axes. So I would encourage you to go play around with this data set on sport balls, uh, figure out what it is, then find some patterns, relationships, and then interpret and predict. Then unpause the video, come back, and we'll see how our interpretation is similar and how it's different. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I would just see what does this data represent? And so on the bottom, I could just look at the object names and it's going to show me we've got a bunch of different balls. Uh, if I click on here, we could also look at diameter. It looks like we also have information on circumference. And then it looks like we also have some data on weight and price. And so the first thing I would do is write down, okay, this is going to be what the data represents. 
Okay, so the data that we have is we've got a bunch of sport balls and we've got some in different size, price, and then we have weight. And so the first thing I wanna do is start playing around with patterns. What are just some descriptive patterns that I would find in the data itself? And so as I start to click around, let me find some stuff that's interesting. So the first pattern I notice is that the bowling ball is both most expensive at $119 and also the heaviest at about seven and a quarter kilograms. Let me look at for some other evidence or other patterns that I notice. So the next thing I notice is if I look at diameter, we have a range of four centimeters to 32 centimeters. And also I calculated mean and median and I got a mean of 12.4 and a median of 7.4. So a lot of the data is really stretched out here for some of these that are just larger diameter. Next thing I wanna start doing is looking at relationships. What are some interesting relationships that I find between data? And that's where you're toggling between the X and the Y axis. So let me play around with that. Okay, some relationships that I've discovered is the diameter is directly, direct, directly related to the circumference. I think that's uh, just math. So the reason why is that when I find the R squared value, it's one. So it's a, a perfectly direct relationship. And then if I look at the slope, it's pi, 3.14. What are some other relationships that uh, the price is directly related to weight? And so there's a good relationship there. And so I got an R squared value of 0.9. That means it's close to one. So it's pretty close to a direct relationship. But then when I looked at price related to diameter, there's still a relationship, but it's not as good a correlation. The R squared value is 0.52. And so uh, as I start to look at relationships, I can start to understand the database in a little bit better way. And so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna interpret uh, and then make some predictions. But to do that, I really have to look at all the overall relationships. Okay, so the relationships that I discovered were uh, if you look at diameter and circumference, they're correlated. And so I just said those make up the size of a sport ball. And then I said if you increase the size, then you increase the weight. Um, so it's not like the price is somehow making it bigger or making its size larger, but I did find a correlation between these as well. So I said, as you increase size of a ball, it makes it heavier and price is correlated to both size and weight. And then the last thing I have to do is I have to make some kind of a prediction So what I said is that the uh, sport ball with a diameter of 15 centimeters would have a circumference of 47, that would be centimeters, and weigh about one kilogram. Okay, now that you've learned how to do that, what I would encourage you to do is look at some of the other data sets, such as the ones on mammals, also the ones on the snowshoe hare population. That's analysis, statistical analysis and interpretation, and I hope that's helpful.